where do I start and where do I stop with Dame Yvonne? Dame Yvonne has the most, had had the most illustrious nursing midwifery career. Um, she started off her career in Southampton, and I know this is a Southeast leadership programme for nurses and midwives in the Southeast, so some of you will be from that area. She, she then went, went, went to work uh, on other organisations in that area, then London, um, and then eventually she became the Chief Nursing Officer of Wales, and she was there for seven years before she then became the Chief Nursing Officer of Scotland. And then the next thing that happened, lo and behold, she became the Chief Nursing Officer for England, as well as the Director of Nursing for NHS England. And she spent many years there um, in government, um, being the voice of nursing. And I really typifies how a nurse can start off at the ward level and get all the way through to government. Um, I, there has been nobody else that's been the Chief Nursing Officer in all three countries. So she's had an amazing career. Now, the other thing about Dame Yvonne, she never stopped once she retired. And Yvonne, I'm really sorry, but I do not know when you were received your um, your Dame Hood. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. There we are. So I, I couldn't. I, I've looked lots of places. I couldn't find it. So Dame. So Yvonne Moores was was awarded by the Queen um, a DBE for her services to nursing and midwifery and. Uh, whenever you look at her biography you'll understand why but that's a long time ago and, and Yvonne never stopped working she's never ever stopped the passion for nursing and midwifery and I first came into contact with Dame Yvonne when I was working in clinical genetics in Southampton and I had um, I had this bee in my bonnet that I knew that I wanted the next thing I wasn't quite sure what it was but lo and behold, this white paper, white paper came out, which was called Making a Difference. And it was a paper published by the CNO at the time, England, Dame Yvonne, about the clinical nursing career for the clinical career for nurses and midwives. And it took everybody, you know, at the, now was the first time we'd ever seen that. You could, there was really a career pathway from a clinic, for those that want to stay in clinical practice, up to a nurse consultant. And I wanted to be that nurse consultant. So um, it, I can still see her little photograph on the on the on the uh, forward of that document. So I owe a lot of my career aspiration to Dame Yvonne. Now, whenever you go anywhere with Dame Yvonne, a million people stop her, and every single one says, "Dame Yvonne, you inspired me so much during my nursing career." And of course, she doesn't remember everybody, but everybody remembers her and the impact that she had. So she's had an amazing career. She's climbed the career ladder. Um, she's been the chief nursing officer of all three countries. She's received a damehood from the Queen. Um, and she's been our, well, actually, the little gap before she was our chair, um, she was the chair, she's been a chair, the chairman of Paul, Paul General Hospital. Um, she set up a, a, a charity there for um, an international charity there. She continues that to this day. She's been the chair of the University of Southampton, an investment bank, and now she's the chair of the Florence Nightingale Foundation. And when I knew she was coming, I thought, oh my goodness, stand by your beds. But every single day, Dame Yvonne inspires not only me, but the rest of our team to do the absolute best we possibly can for nurses and midwives. And it's a pleasure with, it's an absolute pleasure working with her. She's a great friend and a colleague, and um, but she absolutely knows where the foundation's going and, and she in, inspires us to work, really work hard for the foundation. So um, I'm, I know Yvonne's going to have to say a few words to, to, to you all. Is that okay, Yvonne? Thank you very much. It's, it's always terribly embarrassing to be <laughs> introduced with all of that. <laughs> But thank you ever so much, Greta. But probably of everything, I'm most proud to be now the chair of the Florence Nightingale Foundation because we are making a great impact on individual nurses and midwives, but obviously directly, in my view, on patient care across the UK at the moment. But my vision is that it's going to be across the whole world. 
Um, and that's what's exciting too about the foundation. So yeah, I'm a Southampton girl. So it's a real special pleasure for me to actually be with you all today because I can remember the days of being a theatre staff nurse, a ward sister in Southampton, Winchester and around. So um, I feel very, very close to you all. So great to be with you. And first of all, as Greta said, just congratulations to you all on being chosen to be part of this programme, but also of completing it. And now, of course, being one of our Florence Nightingale Foundation nurses, our alumni. So you are connected with us and we look forward to that journey with you all over the coming years. Now today I thought, what can my few words in these few minutes be about? And I decided that it's gonna be about, we must be inspired. We have to be inspired if we are going to move forwards, make our own impact, whether in our personal lives, as well as in our work situations. Um, and we all have all the hard times, the difficult choices. We have to be inspired. And I want to share with you some of my inspirations. And the first is three people who have inspired me. I could have chosen many, but this morning I've chosen these three particular people. And you'll see why when I describe them to you. All three have achieved against the odds. They are remarkable people. And the first is gonna be no surprise to you. It is Florence herself. She actually brought me into nursing. When I read of her, I thought, my goodness, this is something I want to do. And I want to be part of what she had developed and started off in terms of the nursing and midwifery professions. She brought me into nursing and has always, through the whole of my career, inspired me. Whether it is her use of data, converting it to information, so important, and certainly in my roles in government, as you can imagine, briefing ministers, trying to convince governments of the right policies, health policies, nursing policies, the use of data and information has been absolutely vital. And that was obviously, her, as a statistician, it was fundamental to how she moved forwards. But her other inspiration to me has been about the power of influence. Now you through this program, and I hope you will maximize them, have made connections. Yeah, they can't all have been face to face, which as Greta said, is a great sadness, but you've made connections and you know how to make connections. You need those connections. You must have those connections because you can be influential. And she showed us how you can be influential, shaping not just the clinical space around you, but much more widely too, as she did to the governments of the day, of course. But most of all, the quality that she inspires me most with is that of empathy. That is why she achieved what she did. It was her empathy to the poor, to the sick, to the dying. She became close. She knew how important it was, that relationship, which as nurses and midwives, we all have, and we've developed those skills. But in her 
that is what took her right the way through her career path and the achievement she made. And that is the legacy which she's left for me, which I value so much. And many, many other things about her, of course. And I know some of you would have read her notes on nursing and so on and know a lot about her as we do in the foundation. But she has been one of my inspirational people. The second grew up in a very small village in a community in Botswana. A young woman who had no education because girls were not educated, who fought, read her brother's books, and fought for her own education and ultimately gained a scholarship to America to do a PhD, to go into nursing. She chose the nursing profession and fought for that. She then went back to her country and became what is known as the mother of nursing in Botswana because she fought with that government, ministers of the day. There was nothing in place. She set up the educational programs and took it and drove it forwards. Other people in other countries, colleagues helped her, but it was her efforts, determination, dedication to the people of her country. She achieved so much. And I met her recently because I'm involved in choosing what is called the World Nurse of the Year from around the world. And she, we awarded it to, and I met her. She was 94 and from a wheelchair, she met the world's media and addressed them about the importance of the nursing and midwifery contribution and why we must be supported at 94 from a wheelchair. Her name, Serena Kobe Mogui, a wonderful, inspirational person. My third inspiration is someone, and as I talk through about her, particularly those of you who are midwives will know who I'm talking about. She saw the impact of poor health care, the lack of education, especially for girls in her country, the ancient superstitions that had devastating effect on people, especially women. But after she suffered the personal trauma of female genital mutilation, it made her determined to bring about changes. And again, she fought for a scholarship and came to England where she trained as a nurse and a midwife. And she went back to her country as the first midwife in her country. Some of you may now know who I'm talking about. Because the country, of course, was Somaliland, where she built the first maternity hospital. And some of you will have read her extraordinary account of her life. A woman of firsts, Edna Baden Ishmael. Just phenomenal. But again, against the odds she achieved. And all three of my inspirational people that I've shared with you have three things in common. Tenacity. You've got to keep at it. There are going to be banana skins, brick walls, everything. Some put in front of us when we want to achieve sometimes difficult things. 
I've experienced all of that. You've got to be resilient. And I know all of you have been through the pandemic and all that you've achieved in these last few months. I know you are all resilient people. But thirdly, they have dedication. They are single-minded in what they want to achieve. And then they plan and plot to achieve their goal. I believe that all of us and all of you, and my message today, look for your heroes. Find those inspirational people and look to them. I've been re-inspired by reading Edna's book so recently. And we all need this in order to maintain our motivation and move forwards and be influential to improve our patient and client and family care. But finally, the thing that has inspired me most in my life is that of finding talent. In your teams, I'm sure there is someone that you can see that has a talent. Choose them, nurture them, support them, just as you have been in order to come on this program. Be a mentor, but develop others. It's been one of my greatest pleasures to have a team around me and to know that several of those people that I am helping to develop can do my job. And they have been appointed CNO that replaced me in Wales, in Scotland, and in England were all nurtured, developed, supported. And don't be fearful if you have someone around you that's, as it were, brighter, can achieve more than you. That is an increased pleasure in my view. So find that individual, those individuals, as your career unfolds, because that will make such an impact too. So you can all make a difference. You've learned such great skills during this program. I know you'll put them to great use. Use these networks, develop them further. Keep connected with us, please, because we are always here. And we need you, as Greta has said too, that you can make a difference, but be inspired by others. So it's wonderful to join you today. And thank you, Gemma and Greta, for giving me the opportunity of being able to talk. Bye. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, Yvonne. That, I massively appreciate those key messages there. And, and also from Greta, I, I guess the important thing, because we've had a prolonged program, is that we don't forget the motivations you all had on that first day to put that application in. And, and we really do hope that you have had all of your hopes and goals met. But this is just the start of the journey. And, and as Greta and Yvonne have said, you're now part of the FNF family and it's just the start for you um, because the network that we offer you is 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 what will really mean that this will make a difference to your whole career so thank you so much Yvonne I really appreciate those messages